okay so what we see here is perfect so what we see here is air which is under both domes of diaphragm which is quite reassuring uh, for the diagnosis uh, this is a case of pneumoperitoneum this is a straightforward case but there are a few common uh, issues and uh, uh, questions which are associated with this case and they are often asked in the exam or and they are also very practical uh, for those who had difficulty in identifying the gas under left diaphragm so this is the stomach bubble and this air should not be here uh, this is the uh, probably the liver margin and what we see here is uh, gas under the uh, right dome of the diaphragm a common pathology which can masquerade this is uh, so what if you see only uh, uh, air under right dome of diaphragm and the patient is asymptomatic what is that condition caused uh, called perfect so be careful when you use the word syndrome and sign so syndrome is usually associated, like in most cases syndrome, we call it a syndrome when there is, there are clinical features. Uh, when we only see it on imaging, it is known as a sign. Um, it uh, it uh, applies to most of the pathologies, so you can remember it that way. So uh, when you only see gas under diaph, uh, when you see a uh, large bowel interpositioned between the liver and the diaphragm, that is known as the chila diti sign. If the patient is symptomatic for some reason, then it is known as a syndrome. Uh, it's it's very difficult to distinguish uh, 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 chila diti and uh, uh, pneumoperitoneum. I have seen uh, radiographs who have more than 30, 40 years of experience. They have often missed this or uh, called. Uh, so if you get it wrong, it's okay. But a trick which you can do is, so for example, in the exam, you are asked, uh, how will you distinguish chila diti versus uh, uh, pneumoperitoneum uh, uh, yeah hostra uh, perimel uh, you're right a presence of hostra but what if you don't see hostra hostra may or may not be seen perfect so Minu has uh, Dr. Minu has uh, uh, rightly pointed out that if we do a, uh, a decubitus film uh, the air will uh, uh, move up and uh, that will help distinguish between uh, Chila DT and yeah, so even Amardeep uh, has rightly mentioned out uh, Amardeep and Rishabh. Coming to the most common question asked in the exam. What is the, uh, like if you are given an option in an abdominal radiograph and a chest radiograph, what radiograph will you perform for to detect pneumoperitoneum? A supine abdominal radiograph versus chest radiograph. And this is important for the first year and second year residents because uh, this is a common uh, question that is asked. Perfect. Okay. Moving on to the reasons. Why is a chest radiograph more sensitive in detecting uh, pneumoperitoneum? Yeah, erect chest radiograph. That is the uh, perfect, the complete correct answer. Not just chest radiograph. Okay. So, okay, better contrast within the lung. Somebody says tangential, Dr. Ala says tangential x-rays. Uh, that is why we get better contrast. So that is just one reason. What are other reasons? And uh, because it's a very old uh, school kind of a question, the examiners will uh, uh, sadistically wait for you to answer all uh, uh, the possible correct answers. So. That's why uh, I'll discuss all of them uh, so that this gets uh, clear for everybody. Diaphragm better visualize. So everybody is, so this is the reason that everybody remembers. Uh, we'll discuss the rest of the reasons as well. So the first reason as everybody told you, so uh, the top of the diaphragm. So if you imagine an abdominal radiograph, let me try to draw here. So because the rays are divergent in this region, uh, they don't pass tangentially, but because in a chest radiograph, the rays are divert, uh, tangential in the region of the diaphragm and the upper abdomen, uh, there is better contrast that all of you have said. The other reason is, uh, say, chest conditions can simulate acute abdominal pain uh, and mimic acute abdomen. Uh, so that's another reason. The third reason is that abdominal conditions 
uh, can be associated with chest findings. So for example, there may be a pleural effusion uh, in acute pancreatitis. And uh, uh, where do we see pleural effusion uh, in pancreatitis? Uh, do we see it on the right side, on the left side, or is it not very specific? Perfect. So uh, commonly in uh, uh, pancreatitis, the pleural effusion is left-sided. I'm not 100% uh, sure the cause for that, but it's commonly left-sided. Uh, so acute abdominal conditions can have uh, chest pathologies. And even if the chest radiograph is novel, it serves as a baseline for uh, future investigations. So these are the four reasons. Uh, and try to memorize these because uh, these are commonly asked. This is from the old Sutton old as in the uh, the Sutton which uh, the seventh edition of Sutton so just to revise because of the tangential beam uh, there is better contrast uh, chest conditions can mimic ab abdominal conditions abdominal conditions can have chest findings and the chest radiograph can serve as a baseline for future thank you guys for watching this video uh, if you like the video make sure you give it a big fat thumbs up and if you don't like the video uh, you can uh, dislike the video and let me know in the comment section how i can improve and what other topics should i cover in our upcoming videos also if you're new here make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for all future updates thank you